Zach, we are back and we are talking fantasy sleepers to buy low and buy right now. We are kind of getting to the point where we're going to be ramping up to the fantasy football regular season. We got August right ahead of us. It's the end of July here. We got to talk sleepers. We got to talk some guys that you all need to wake up on and get on your radar, get them on your roster. And we're going to tell you how to do it. But before we do that, I hope you enjoy the video. Please leave a like if you do comment down below. Who are some players that we may be sleeping on? Who are some players that the dynasty or fantasy football communities might be sleeping on as well? We want to hear from you in the comments and we want to hear from you over in the Patreon discord Head on over to patreon.com forward slash nice rewind. Get in that discord server for a free seven day trial and see what we can do for your dynasty teams. But with all that said, Zach, and all the promo in the books, let's get to the content that people came for. Talking sleepers, who's your first pick here? Yeah, so my first pick of sleepers, Bob, is going to be Brandon Cooks. And I was pretty sure at the onset of filling out our show sheet that the dynasty community was going to be pretty low on him. But when I did the research, I was just shocked at how low the community really is. He's wide receiver 78 on DLF. <laughs> and wide receiver 82 on keep trade cut. I think these are just criminal rankings. And, you know, as I've coined the phrase hopium, and I saw some of the players' names in front of Brandon Cooks, I saw some names that just don't belong. I saw, like, Jalen Hyatt ahead of Brandon Cooks. I'm like, dude, let, let's let go of that hopium. Let's come back to reality, right? We want to score some points. We want to win some games. Brandon Cooks is going to help you that. Last year from week 10 on, he averaged 13.7 points per game. I think it was right around like wide receiver 26, 27, 28 for points per game. Not anything crazy, but dependable. You can plug that into your starting lineup. Think about weeks 10 through 18 too, right? Second half of the season, injuries, bye weeks, so on and so forth. Um, and that's when the Dallas Cowboys offense really came to life. Dak Prescott, uh, I think from week six on, was quarterback one, quarterback two in, in Dynasty. Part of that was the emergence of Brandon Cooks, his first year in that offense, finding out where he slots in. And it looks like he got much more comfortable in that offense the second half of the season. Then we look towards this offseason. The Cowboys offense added literally no one and is going to rely on a hodgepodge of running backs to fulfill that role but they didn't add anybody in the in, in the receiving game. So it's going to be CeeDee Lamb. It's going to be Brandon Cooks. It's going to be Jake Ferguson. And maybe it's Jalen Tolbert. And maybe it's one of these other guys on the roster. But Brandon Cooks is penciled in as the wide receiver, too, by all means, on that team. And there is nobody pushing him for that role, at least in my opinion. I went to Dynasty Daddy to look at some recent trades for Brandon Cooks. And I saw some deals. I, every deal I saw, I, would, I almost said I would accept that deal. Uh, it was Brandon Cooks for in the, in the current rookie draft, 312. And this was uh, this trade happened four days ago, so there was still a league having their rookie draft. You could convert that to a late 20, 25 third round pick. Um, I saw Brandon Cooks for Cade Otten. And I saw Brandon Cooks for Tyquan Thornton and John Mechie. To me, this is a player that, again, I would feel comfortable having as a starting flex play for me. Um, somebody that I would love to have as like my wide receiver four or five on my dynasty roster that I would feel absolutely and 100% positively comfortable relying on uh, a, a player in my starting lineup week in and week out. And at the cost of a late third round pick or the 312 or a 25 third, which is a throw in in, in so many deals, uh, I, I just don't understand why the dynasty community is so low. I understand he's 31 years old. I don't care. I'm trying to score points. That's kind of the purpose of this video. Let me find a sleeper, somebody that will help me to win some games and score some points. Brandon Cooks checks all the boxes for me, Bob. What say you? Yeah, I'm definitely in on Brandon Cooks as well. And you say he's penciled into the wide receiver two role. He's penned in. He's black sharpied out in that wide receiver two role. Nobody is coming to touch that role. Jalen Tolbert just isn't that guy. Brandon Cooks, also you mentioned, kind of definitely got eased into this offense, had the lowest target share of his career in the last three years at least, um, and probably throughout the rest of his career. Knowing how good he's been when it comes to target share, only 14.44% target share in intended target share, 21.79% the year before, 27% in 2021. So, I mean, that's surely set to come up. He's the number two guy there. You do have Jake Ferguson, who's going to factor into touches too, but certainly Brandon Cook's only 30 right now, will be 31 um, early on in the season, early or late September. So 
yeah, I think that's probably a good reasoning for it. But like you said, guys like Jalen Hyatt have no business. Like I get Brandon Cooks is older. Yes, Jalen Hyatt's going to be around a little longer, but that doesn't mean de facto he should be ahead of Brandon Cooks in any form or fashion. I like these values. I think, yeah, you don't have to pay a lot to get Brandon Cooks. And when we're talking sleepers, we're talking guys that we think are going to produce more than people think this year and that we can get at low cost or guys that we think are going to produce more, maybe not for a competitive sense. I know you got one player who might be a little less for a competitive sense, but somebody whose value is going to rise a little bit over the course of the season and be that much higher next year. And we want to buy in a little lower now while we still can. So I like this a good bit. I like the pickup here, Zach. Brandon Cooks is a great, great one to go get. You know, when, when players age, if you aren't able to get them off of your roster to make good on the their peak values while you still can, buying back in on them, if they're not necessarily on your roster or they're on somebody else's roster, buying back in when you're in a competitive state to help flush out your roster entirely to make up for bye weeks or just players not meeting expectations, filling them out with some age vets that can put up some points for you. Like you said, 13.7 points per game from week 10 on. 13.7 points per game in PPR would have been good for wide receiver 24 on the season last year. So if you were to stretch that out over the course of the season, great. That would be, you'd be getting them at a supreme discount. Definitely all about the buy here, Zach. Getting into mine and one of my favorite buys that I've kind of highlighted a little bit over the past few weeks, Marquise Hollywood Brown coming in at keep trade cuts, wide receiver 44. And then looking at some redraft values here, I'm kind of trying to get a perspective on how people are thinking about this player in a one-year snapshot versus necessarily a you know long-term one, because I think that can kind of point us in the direction of some values, some different ways, and think about players a little differently. Um, his underdog wide receiver rank is 32, and you have to think too, Marquise Brown probably gets a little inflated in that because he's like, oh, it's good for Marquise Brown. You don't have to guess which week he's going to pop off. He's just going to automatically start for you. So he's a little higher in redraft ranks than on keep trade cut right now. And looking over the last three seasons, consistently good target shares, 22.8%, 23.7%, 26.7%, all wide receiver one-ish, wide receiver 1A, 1B-ish type numbers. Um, And I do notice that there is a descending rate there. It's 26.7 in uh, 2021, 23.7 in 2022, and 22.8 in 2023. So yes, it's descending, but Marquise Brown's going to earn himself a good share here. And he's on a prove-it deal with one of, if not the best offense in the league, uh, especially with this revamped wide receiver core. But you look at this core. So you have Rashi Rice, who we still don't know anything about this suspension nonsense. We don't know if he's going to miss time, how much he's going to miss, whatever it's going to be, if it's going to be this year even. But either which way, looking at Rashi Rice last year, put together a 17.9% target share, which is good for a first-year rookie that was drafted in the second round but not an elite number by any stretch of the imagination. Then when it comes to Xavier Worthy, first round rookie wide receiver since 2014 average, 19.58% intended target share. However, I wouldn't be surprised to see this on the lower end just because of the amount of mounts to feed in this offense. Um, And kind of his play style, I know he had a nice target share in college, but it's a different game. And of course you have Travis Kelsey who averaged 22.7% target share as well last year, and he's obviously been a top target getter in that offense for a long time. And if I've learned anything doing my projections for 2024, which you can get at patreon.com forward slash dynasty rewind in that gold tier projections 2.0 will be dropping at the top of August, but it's that consistent target share tends to follow the wide receiver, which as it stands leads me to believe that Marquise Brown will be the wide receiver one in this offense or the wide receiver one B at worst alongside Rashi Rice this season. And obviously you have Travis Kelsey in there as well, who's going to factor into a high target share. But looking at the completed trades, possible costs via Dynasty Daddy, we got Marquise Brown for a 25 second. Saw that two times. Uh, Marquise Brown for the 24 to 11. And then Marquise Brown straight up for Dontavian Wicks. And then also Marquise Brown for Dontavian Wicks plus a 25 third. I'd make all these deals. I know a 25 second is probably the absolute most I'd want to pay. I wouldn't want to, you know, do anything on top of that at any point, but I'd gladly turn in Dontavian Wicks, who I think just doing the Green Bay Packers yesterday, again, he's the fourth mouth to feed in that offense um, at the wide receiver position, let alone when you start throwing in the tight ends. Just not a guy I want for fantasy football right now. If Christian Watson gets traded, okay, maybe we see something out of Wicks, but I don't. I'm not going to bank on that for a player. So if I can turn that into something more solid, more concrete now, absolutely going to do it. Same with these late 
uh, second round picks. If I'm adding Marquise Brown, that's where I hope my team is in a position to be a late second round pick next year. I want him to be a flex piece. I don't want him to be my wide receiver two or wide receiver three. I want him to be maybe my wide receiver three on rotating weeks, not set in stone every single week, primarily filling out that flex spot for me. I'm definitely in on Marquise Brown's value. I think he's being slept on that little bit in this offense. I know he's a little volatile with what we've seen out of him. I know he's left a lot to be desired, and that's probably why you're getting him at a discount right now. Zach, what are your thoughts on Marquise Brown and these values? Yeah, I think those values are kind of spot on with just the lack of production over the last two years. Although, as you so eloquently laid out, there are reasons for it. I go back to when I think of Hollywood Brown, I think of his Baltimore years and specifically that third year where he had 145 targets, 91 receptions, 1,000 yards, and six touchdowns. I mean, he had 21, 22 touchdowns his first three seasons. And then everything's just taken a dip with everything that happened with the Cardinals, the coaching staff, Kyler Murray getting injured. Then last year, Brown was injured himself. So there have been reasons for why things haven't gone the way you'd like them to uh, for Hollywood Brown the last two seasons. But, I mean, it sure does shape up nicely for this season, right? Uh, Goes to one of the – I'm not going to say a top offense because it wasn't last year, but it can be. And it, yeah. it, it profiles with one of the best offensive minds um, in Andy Reid and one of the best NFL quarterbacks with, in Patrick Mahomes. And then you slot in opportunity with a probable suspension coming at some point to Rashi Rice, although we don't know if that's 100% certain. It could be it could drag into 2025. Um, but there is opportunity in that offense. They needed someone last year. I know they won, but they won in spite of their wide receivers. And they obviously identified that as a huge need going and signing Hollywood Brown and drafting uh, Xavier Worthy as well. So they obviously identified that they need pass catchers. So Hollywood Brown, I I definitely, if I'm in a competitive situation and I need kind of uh, the same as we talked about with Brandon Cooks, I need points. I'm, I'm going to project that Hollywood Brown is going to do better than last year in an offense that is very creative and figures out ways to get their best players um, opportunities, targets, receptions, and touchdowns. All he's got to do is catch it because that's all they didn't do last year. That's the only – every one of those wide receivers had opportunities. Mm-hmm. They just didn't catch it. I like this one. This is a good one, especially um, – you know how uh, my philosophy is with these. Is it good for the price point? And for me, it checks that box. Yeah, and I think it's one of those players that has so much upside that is just – not baked into the price right now. Like you, I think the floor is great for whatever you get out of Marquise Brown. If you get what you've got in the last couple of years where he has some boom games, he has some solid production, but then you miss time, whatever the case is great. But if he manages to string together a full season, which, you know, it's hard to sit here and project a full season when we know he's missed time in the past, but looking through possibly rose colored lenses, I think there's a lot of upside that is not baked into this cost, but Zach, we're talking about another player here, a player you've been touting for a bit now. Why don't you talk about your boy here? What do you got for values? Why are you buying? What are you buying him for? Yeah, I mean, we saw in the in the hard knocks to the Giants, they were talking about Motor Singletary, and uh, that's my pick right here. I'm going after Devin Singletary in situations where it makes sense. Competitive push on DLF. He's running back 39. Keep trade cut. He's running back 41 with Brian Dayball, which was his career in Buffalo. He was a top 24 running back in 42% of his games. Last year, he was running back nine in points per game from week 10 on, which is when he got control of that backfield. And he's one of only six running backs with 800 plus rushing yards every year since 2021. And look, I, it's definitely going to be harder to succeed this year because we don't know what that giant offense looks like. And that offensive line is it coherent. Can, can they, um, block for the quarterback for the running back so on and so forth but Devin Singletary has had success everywhere he's gone and and last year I I for sure thought like that was the end of Devin Singletary and then he surprised everyone in the fantasy community he goes out he gets a three-year deal and now he's back with Brian Dayball which to me is the thing that really ignites the flame as to why I'm excited for Devin Singletary he's not just going to like a, an offense that he has no familiarity with, and he got a three-year contract. No, he's going somewhere that he has familiarity with the coaching staff, somewhere that knows how to use him, knows what he does well. And then, you know, the, the, the cherry on top of that, as you said, is, hey, it's not hard to get the other pieces of that backfield, that being Tyron Tracy and Eric Gray. 
But I did look on Dynasty Daddy, look at some recent trades. I mean, every one of these trades, I would, I would, if I was in a competitive situation, I needed this piece, I would make the trade. I saw Devin Singletary for Roman Wilson. I saw Devin Singletary for Audrey Estime, two rookies. And then I saw Devin Singletary for a 2025 second. Again, if I'm in a competitive situation, I need a running back that I feel like is my uh, my team's RB3, my flex play running back. I feel confident that Devin Singletary is going to give me that. I'm not trading for him to be my, my running back one. Let me make that abundantly clear. Because I do think that there will be certain matchups where you can't start Devin Singletary. He is not start proof. You have to play the matchups with Devin Singletary. But if I need a third or fourth running back, I need a flex play, an injury fill-in, a bye week fill-in. I feel confident in buying Devin Singletary. Um, and, and my approach with running back is just give me 10 points. Give me 10 points. I usually build through the wide receivers and the tight ends. Let me let those guys be the superstars for me. Let them get the 15 to 20 points. Can I get a solid double digit amount of points from my running backs? And I feel confident that Devin Singletary would give me that on a week in and week out basis. You just can't bet against this guy. I mean, it's happened every year. The Bills drafted another running back every single year. Devin Singletary was there trying to replace him. And he said, no, I'm not going anywhere. And he goes to Houston and replaces their running back, which is, I think, only fitting. My main concern is purely just how good or bad is this New York Giants offense going to be. But like you said, you touched on it. He's not, you're not expecting him to be your running back one. You're expecting him to be a fill-in, a flex piece. Maybe he needs to start in your RB2 slot for an emergency, whatever the case is. Because there are going to be weeks where you really just can't start this guy. Um, not wisely, at least, outside of desperation. But I'm sure there will be those weeks. You can never have enough running back depth. And running back depth like Devin Singletary, easy to acquire and worthwhile to acquire. And that's, you know, two things I think we can check off a box for and say, hey, this is a good running back buy. Moving on into the next one here. I got Deontay Johnson. I know, Zach, you were upset when I put him on the sheet, but hey, get to the show sheet faster. Looking at keep trade cut, he's wide receiver 45, pretty in line with redraft uh, at underdog wide receiver 43. But going back to target shares, Deontay Johnson has gotten plenty of it over the years, 23.5%, 27%, 28.5%. I know, again, that's descending, but we know it's been a mess over there in Pittsburgh the last several years. Um, at quarterback, offensive coordinator, you name it, it's been rough. But looking at this offense now, despite Adam Thielen's being there and someone who's also demanded targets throughout his career, we saw a massive decline in his production and just his effectiveness toward the end of 2023. This team went out and got wide receivers who can get open because at the end of last year, there were no wide receivers that could get open. So Deontay Johnson will be a great addition to this. And in my opinion, he will lead this wide receiver core in targets in 2024. You have offensive minded coach and Dave Canales, who helped coordinate a stellar season for Tampa Bay with Baker Mayfield at the helm in 2023. And I believe Bryce Young is good enough. We should see ample improvement as well. Far more innovative system, along with the weapons this offense has added to I mean, running back, wide receiver, tight end, yeah, pretty good, pretty good additions. Um, even though they're still young, hey, they're investing in this offense. They're investing in Bryce Young, not only at positions, but at the the head coach as well. This team should be in for an improvement. Um, and I, I will say, looking at my projections, I have them lower than I would like, but I know that the ceiling for this offense is a lot higher than what I have the players projected for. Like where I have Bryce Young, where I have um, Deontay Johnson is not super exciting right now. But it's a team that if they hit, if they improve upon last year, it, they're going to hit a lot higher than my projections suggest. So if you've seen them and you're wondering, hey, man, you're talking to Deontay Johnson here, but he's not super high in your ranks. He's not low. He's in the wide receiver three range. But uh, either way, he's valued as a wide receiver four here. So still an upgrade on value. But at this point, it's a light investment for a player that still holds a good bit of upside at his value, especially in PPR formats, maybe less exciting in standard or half point PPR because, you know, he's going to get the receptions, but not a huge after the catch guy yards at the catch guy. But it is what it is. But looking at completed trades here, Deontay Johnson for a 25 second saw that four times. Deontay Johnson for a 25 second and 25 third. Uh, Deontay Johnson and a 25 third for a 25 second. Deontay Johnson for Ricky Pearsall. Deontay Johnson for Zach Moss. I think. Pretty much you can pencil in a 25 second as the cost to get Deontay Johnson if you want some depth added to your roster. 
there might be some higher upside you can chase depending on what you need. I, you know, I think there's a lot of good running back buys you can buy for a 25 second right now, if that's what you need, especially depending on where that sits on the spectrum, if it's early, late, mid, whatever the case is. Um, but I like those costs. I know you're a Ricky Pearsall guy. I am not as much a Ricky Pearsall guy, but I would make all these deals in a competitive push and a competitive stance. Get me off of Zach Moss. I know we think he's kind of a mid player. Both of us do. Um, he's in a good position this year, though. You can't argue that he's going to probably take most of that workload. But what's he going to do with it is the question. But those are the costs. Those are the things I'm looking to do. Possibly get Deontay Johnson on my roster anywhere I can, where I need some depth. Again, not somebody we're expecting to be a wide receiver one or two. Somebody we want to add in that can help us win. Not all sleepers are designed to be most sleepers. Most real sleepers aren't designed to be running back ones, wide receiver ones either. So this is one that, hey, Deontay Johnson has finished as a wide receiver one in the past. Am I saying it's going to happen this year in this offense? No, I am not. Zach, what are you thinking about Deontay Johnson? You wanted to buy in on him as well. What do you got? Yeah, this is my favorite player on this list. Um, I have to get to the show sheet earlier so you don't do this to me. And at least just put down names, you know, just put down names so you don't steal this from me. Let me give you some more information that – bolsters my confidence that Deontay Johnson is going to be a great pick. Okay. No mention of Dave Canales, who has just been phenomenal for fantasy wide receivers the last two years. Last year, when we all thought the Buccaneers were dead, Mike Evans and Chris Mm -hmm. Godwin each had 130 targets, 79 plus catches, a thousand plus yards in the Bucs offense. The year before that was DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett having very, very good fantasy seasons with Geno Smith, another Offense we just thought was like everybody in 2022 thought that the Seattle Seahawks were going to be a top five team in the NFL draft. And everyone last year, including me, had the Buccaneers finishing as a top five team in the NFL draft. And both teams were playoff teams. Deontay Johnson used to playing mostly out of the slot last year, lined up 78.8% of plays outside. So completely mismanaged by that offense and Matt Canada in Pittsburgh. His most successful route in 2023, this is according to Dave Richard of CBS Sports, or it could be Dave Richard. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> accenting the last name there because Richard not... sounds more fancy. Exactly, exactly. And it gives him more credibility. Exactly. In, 2020, in 2023, Deontay Johnson's most successful route was the out route, which was Bryce Young's most successful throw route as a rookie. So, I mean, it's 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 a match made in heaven. To make, like, boom, let's go. Deontay Johnson, man. And then for me, of course, the caveat of this is the price tag because I've had people who now know that I love Deontay Johnson come and try and ask for a first round pick, two seconds and a third. And I'm like, no, that's not what the current market dictates. So I'm not going to pay that. What you said and the recent trades that are shown on Dynasty Daddy and other websites are more um, closely affiliated with what the market believes is the value of Deontay Johnson which is ridiculous given all the information that Bob and I have given you. So I love this pick. This is if I had could pick one player out of everyone on this list, this would be the one I'd be going, going after quite a bit. And the problem is, is that I put that information out there for so long that people that I'm trading with know it and won't let me get Deontay Johnson at the appropriate price. It's the occupational hazard of what we right. do, Zach. We just can't get good deals in our dynasty leagues anymore, but that's okay. You got a guy you're trying to buy here at a discount, a rookie sleeper. Talk about him, Zach. Yeah, I'm big, I'm big, big, big on Jermaine Burton. The wide receiver three right now for the Cincinnati Bengals at any day could be the wide receiver two and projects to be the wide receiver two next year. Although who knows what the Bengals do in the draft? All I'll say is no matter what the Bengals do in the draft, Tyler Boyd has always been a fantasy relevant wide receiver and look i know that we have last year tyler boyd's performance in our mind which wasn't terrible it just wasn't with joe burrow it was with jake browning he has 300 tyler boyd had 385 targets over the last four seasons that's an average of 96 targets a year and this isn't like there was 151 year and then 50 no no this was 90 80 110 90 consistently over the last four years and i could have continued taking that information for five or six or seven years because he's done the same thing with the Cincinnati Bengals. Three out of those four seasons, he was a wide receiver three, Bob. He wasn't last year because he was playing with Jake Browning, as I pointed out. So Jermaine Burton just slots right into the Tyler Boyd role. 
And, you know, the one thing I will say is we've heard that the Bengals are going to try to play Jamar Chase more out of the slot. Jamar Chase himself wants to play more out of the slot. And that puts Burton on the outside where he was very, very good in Alabama last year. Although it's tough to tell because Jalen Milrow is so bad at throwing the ball. It, It was really tough to watch. I looked at some trades on Dynasty Daddy. This first one just makes me laugh. I put Deontay Burks for some reason. It's uh, Jermaine Burton for uh, Dontavian Wicks, which, I mean, the Dontavian Wicks, that's the Hopium player of the year. Like, if we could give a Hopium MVP candidate, it would be Deontay, it would be Dontavian Wicks. And second, it would be Zach Moss. I would trade Jermaine Burton for Dontavian Wicks in a heartbeat because, as you mentioned earlier, that's a wide receiver four or five for the Green Bay Packers. I also saw Jermaine Burton for Antonio Gibson. I saw Jermaine Burton for Khalil Shakir. Give me Jermaine Burton all day. I may not get the better end of that, those two deals the first year, although I, I, I may I may also get the better end of that deal. But I think long term, Jermaine Burton slots in as the wide receiver two or three in Cincinnati. He's there for his rookie contract. They're not going to pay T. Higgins. They're already like, well, I guess we have to pay Jamar Chase. Like, Who knows what's going to happen in Cincinnati? All I know is Jermaine Burton is tethered to Joe Burrow, probably as his wide receiver three or better for the next four years. Sign me up for that, please. Yeah, it is very curious what's going to happen with that wide receiver room because I think if if what happens that you've alluded to, uh, Jamar Chase moving into the slot more frequently, that could be huge for Jermaine Burton because if, if that's not the case, where does Jermaine Burton really factor into this offense? You know, to me, and I know this is a guy we just liked last year, but it would point to somebody like Charlie Jones, a more prototypical slot receiver um, would be the wide receiver three. And maybe those are cases where Jamar Chase is not in the slot. Maybe Charlie Jones comes in, Burton is, you know, maybe factored out at least in year one while T Higgins is still there. Yeah. So I, I have some concerns, especially with what we've seen or what we saw in college. And you noted to the, you know, not great, quarterback play as a passer but we also had those you know quote unquote coaching concerns with lack of effort and things like that which you can never really validate but you'd never like to hear and Jermaine Burton is somebody who we've also noted in our prospecting that had ample opportunity everywhere he went and just never made the most of it so how is he supposed to make opportunity when there isn't a ton there maybe there's more there than I think but I think of these values I think it's worth the swing again Dontavian Wicks uh, more than happy, Antonio Gibson, Khalil Shakir, somebody who I like, but again, somebody who's kind of buried in that offense and just hasn't really risen above average yet. Um, unfortunately, as much as we love the player, but don't hate the shout. Not necessarily for me because I do just have some concerns. But if you made any of these deals, Zach, I wouldn't be like clowning you in the comments or anything. I wouldn't clown anybody for making these deals. But like I said, I'm just I'm just not as in on it. Maybe. Maybe I feel a little better if if we see T. Higgins move along next year, which all signs point to be the case. Who knows? Um, just like, you know, just a toxic relationship that can't quit their ex. You know, just just let T. Higgins go. Dang it. Don't don't hold him around like we have. But either way, speaking of toxic situations, we got a running back backfield to talk about. And my sleeper, my final sleeper, Raheem Mostert, a guy who I brought up continuously over the past couple of weeks, who is probably the best in my opinion, running back by you can buy right now. I know he's older. He's going to be 32 years old, but he is dirt cheap. And at this point, if you're competitive, he's too cheap not to take a swing on given his cost. If you can buy him from somebody who's maybe concerned about the age, concerned about the rise of A-Chan, which sounds like a great movie. Looking at looking at what's happened this offseason, he restructured his deal to extend him into the 2025 season. They could have just let his contract run out. And I will admit they can save some money cutting him next year, but it's kind of a, in why bother money territory they're saving like three million dollars which to you and me is a lot of money but uh nfl teams not as much money but looking at how these two shook out last year 53 percent opportunity share in 2023 for raheem mostert alongside devon a chan's 40.6 percent and in the handful of games they were both healthy mostert outpaced a chance touches 81 to 69 nice which is admittedly a much smaller gap than i thought there'd be i thought it'd be a little bit bigger but it was kind of odd usage. You saw a lot of games where Achan kind of took over in the second half because they were up by so many points, and I think that could have been where some uh, extra touches came in. But either which way, this isn't this isn't meant to be a discussion of Moser versus Achan. It doesn't have to be. We've seen backfields where two running backs can be very very good. It's purely to say that Raheem Mostert can still be good, and so can Devon Achan in in whatever roles they're in. You know, we shouldn't expect or hope that Achan gets. of carries because 
he's going to get run to the ground, you know, at, at his size and in, in today's NFL. So, and I know the, the big concern for Mostert is his age. And that's definitely a chief concern. I get it. You're kind of playing the when, when are the wheels going to fall off the bus kind of game. But there's far less miles on Raheem Mostert than a typical 32-year-old running back. Given his winding road of his career, Raheem Mostert has a total of 735 career rushes in nine seasons. And just for some reference, Josh Jacobs, almost six years younger, has 1,318 career rushes in just five seasons. And then you look at Derrick Henry, who's a little older, still two years younger than Raheem Mostert, has 2,186 career rushes in eight seasons. And I'll be the first to admit he's an absolute alien and built totally different, but you get my point in saying that Raheem Mostert has not taken as much damage as a typical 30-plus-year-old running back, but he's someone that can put up high-end running back two, low-end running back one numbers in this offense that you're paying running back four prices for. This is somebody that you could slot in as your running back two in your lineup and probably feel pretty darn good about it. And looking at costs and complete trades via Dynasty Daddy, uh, Raheem Moser for Gabe Davis, Raheem Moser for Jonathan Mingo, who may not even be starting in this offense um, this year. I like to think so, but last year was not awesome for him um, in a lot of metrics. Uh, Raheem Moser for a 25 second and 26 second, which is by far the largest cost I've seen this summer to go get Raheem Moser. Uh, Raheem Moser for Cortland Sutton. We saw this trade a little bit ago. Um, in another video, we discussed it, and this trade still pisses me off that somebody's sending Cortland Sutton for Raheem Mostert or vice versa. I actually want you to send Cortland Sutton for Raheem Mostert. Don't send Raheem Mostert for Cortland Sutton. Uh, mid is to the mid wide receivers. And then Raheem Mostert for a 25 third, saw that three times. Raheem Mostert for a 25 second, saw that twice. So it probably shakes out around a couple of thirds is what you're going to have to pay to get Raheem Mostert. A second is probably your locked and loaded, get it done deal. And if you're a projected late team, I think a late second is more than a fair price to pay, albeit you you are in that maybe you're maybe you can pull a distant fourth back in the deal if you have to send a second just to get some shred of youth in the deal, something a little longer term than Mostert. If you are that concerned about buying in on an aging running back that you're outside of points in your lineup, you're not going to see the return on investment on outside of that points in your lineup. And hopefully Winning your league, which is what a lot of these players are designed to do. They're designed to hopefully find you a pathway to help you win your league um, by providing extra depth points out of players that people are writing off. I didn't even touch on his uh, keep trade cut value, running back 42, underdog key, uh, and redraft values, running back 28. I mean, that's a huge discrepancy value-wise, draft-wise, whatever the case is. Again, he can be your running back too, but you're paying running back four prices for him, Zach. What do you got on Raheem Moser? What do you think? Yeah, this is a great pick. Uh, I was actually doing some math right when you had said uh, the the numbers of his usage. I'll just extrapolate a little bit more information out of that. Prior to his Miami years, only 332 touches. So he comes to Miami virtually, you know, six or seven years in the league, virtually unused. You know, what is that divided by seven? Like, 50 maybe 50 touches a year it comes out to so yes he's 32 years old but the usage is that of what you would find at a 25 year old running back and i'm not saying to expect that kind of production it's just something to keep in mind when you tell yourself well i'm buying a 32 year old running back sure but he's played uh 31 of a possible 34 games over the past two seasons um, he's been incredibly durable, available for you, um, has produced. Obviously, you could probably expect a little bit of a touchdown regression. Who knows? But this is a perfect offense for him. And my goodness, like I would pay double what all those trades, <laughs> Jonathan Mingo for for Raheem Mostert. Like, I give me two Jonathan Mingos. I'll pay you that still, you know, because yeah. I, I can depend on. Like, I'm looking at a safe floor for Raheem Mostert of 200 points. I feel like that's a safe floor. Two years ago, he had 181 points in that offense, um, and they were, still, they were still featuring Jeff Wilson two years ago. Last year, it was a lot of him, and then they would sprinkle in Devon Achan, but Achan missed time. Like, all the other running backs behind Mostert missed time last year, and so he had 260 fantasy points last year. So I expect somewhere in the middle of that, around 200, and to buy that for one year for 
10 cents on the dollar is just an absolute no-brainer. I totally agree with you here, Bob. Can't not do it. Just like you can't not leave a like on this video and comment down below what you thought of these values, what you thought of these picks, and who are some of your favorite sleepers for the 2024 fantasy football season. We want to hear about it. We want to hear from you, and we want to hear from you in our Discord. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Dynasty Rewind. Get in there for a free seven-day trial and see what we can do for your dynasty teams and if you want that much more help with your dynasty teams check out the roster view option in the pinned comment below as well as the youtube description where you can get 40 percent off a roster review right now if you use promo code big summer but with all that said all the promo in the book zach and i are going to get the heck out of here we will see you in the next one but until then i hope that y'all have a good one